Hi, I'm John Atak. Hi, I'm Ursula Wake and this is Lyrical Wax. And today uh, we are going to deal with some songs from what some people call the British Invasion. They're the 60s when British music swamped the American charts. Um, so the first song, which we were going to read the lyrics from, mm -hmm. was written, the lyrics were largely written by Mick Jagger in fact, but it's a Jagger and Richards song by the Rolling Stones. And the song is Get Off Of My Cloud. Um, it was released on the 25th of September 1965. And it reached number one in the UK and it reached number one in the US. Mm -hmm. Mick Jagger said it. It's a stop bugging me post-teenage alienation song. A lot of hyphens in that. The grown-up <laughs> world was a very ordered society in the early 60s and I was coming out of it. America was even more ordered than anywhere else. I found it was a very restrictive society in thought and behaviour and dress. So, there we are. There we are. So I'm going to read, read Get Off Of My Cloud, and we've, it is definitely Get Off get Of. Off of. Yeah. So I thought for many years, Get Off My Cloud, but it's mm. Get Off Of My Cloud. Yeah. And if we're going to get linguistic about it, the word off and the word of actually come from exactly the same root but we're not we're not going to get them this <laughs> they're cognate <clears throat> yeah okay do it get off of my cloud i live in an apartment on the 99th floor of my block and i sit at home looking out the window imagining the world has stopped and in flies a guy who's all dressed up just like a Union Jack, and says, I've won five pounds if I have his kind of detergent pack. I said, hey you, get off of my cloud. Hey you, get off of my cloud. Hey you, get off of my cloud. Don't hang around, because two's a crowd on my cloud, baby. The telephone is ringing. I say, hi, it's me. Who is it there on the line? A voice says, hi, hello, how are you? Well, I guess I'm doing fine. He says, it's 3 a.m. There's too much noise. Don't you people ever want to go to bed? Because you feel so good. Do you have to drive me out of my head? I said, hey, you, get off my cloud. Hey, you, get off of my cloud. I said, hey, you, get off of my cloud. Don't hang around because two's a crowd on my cloud, baby. I was sick and tired, fed up with this, and decided to take a drive downtown. It was so very quiet and peaceful. There was nobody, not a soul around. I laid myself out. I was so tired, and I started to dream. In the morning, the parking tickets were just like flags stuck on my windscreen. I said, hey, you, get off of my cloud. Hey, you, get off of my cloud. Hey, you, get off of my cloud. Don't hang around, because two's a crowd on my cloud, baby. I, I think Mick Jagger just wrote some wonderful lyrics, you know, and should they, they're poetic, you know, mm. they, they really mm. are. And, mm. and they mean something about something. Yeah. It's also interesting, that's another song that's been inspired by um, traffic wardens, <laughs> as was lovely Rita Meter Rita made when Paul McCartney got a parking Slightly ticket. different yeah. attitude to, Peter, to uh, park, parking wardens, but there you go. Yeah, and you've got the repetition of the flag, the Union Jack, and then the mm, parking tickets are like yeah. flags. You know, oh, wow, well, this is profound Neat. stuff. Okay, moving on um, now to March 1966, um, a song written by Peter Townsend um, of The Who. Um, and it made number five in the UK. It didn't make the Billboard chart, apparently, at that point. And the song is Substitute, and I, until I looked this up, I'd never heard this story. Apparently, Pete Townsend became obsessed with Smokey Robinson, the miracles, Tracks of My Tears, and particularly the line, although she may be cute, she's just a substitute. And it something to do with the way, apparently, that Smokey Robinson pronounces the word substitute. Mm. Um, so in the in the US mm. when it came out, the line, I look all white, but my dad was black, had to be replaced, it being a somewhat segregated society still. 
it would appear. And it was re-recorded as, I try walking forward, but my feet walk back. Oh, so that's a neat way of doing it in, in a way that still scans and rhymes, but a bit of a shame. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I remember as a kid, I loved the Who and I loved the Stones from the age of, you know, about eight or something and remember, get off my cloud coming out. And the Substitute was just one of the great mm. songs. And it did get through to me as, you know, a sort of 10 year old that he was talking about race. He was saying, you know, I... He was saying, uh, you know, let's not do this. This this division is bad. I look oh. all white, but my dad was black, you know. Oh. I don't think I even list, picked up that lyric anyway when yeah. I was younger. I never, yeah. So here we are, in the words of Mr Peter Townsend, who mm. would later, of course, be the head of poetry at Faber and Faber. Was Peter he? Peter Townsend, yes, he was. Oh, wow. Yeah. He also had that. serious drug and alcohol problems, <laughs> which sadly <laughs> meant that for many years he didn't produce work of this, I think, astonishing quality. Mm. You think we look pretty good together. You think my shoes are made of leather, but I'm a substitute for another guy. I look pretty tall, but my heels are high. The simple things you see are all complicated. I look pretty young, but I'm just backdated. Yeah. Substitute your lies for fact. I can see right through your plastic Mac. I look all white, but my dad was black. My fine looking suit is really made out of sack. I was born with a plastic spoon in my mouth. The north side of my town faced east and the east was facing south. And now you dare to look me in the eye. Those crocodile tears are what you cry. It's a genuine problem. You won't try to work it out at all. You just pass it by, pass it by. Substitute me for him. Substitute my coke for gin. Substitute you for my mum. At least I'll get my washing done. But I'm a substitute for another guy. I look pretty tall, but my heels are high. The simple things you see are all complicated. I look pretty young, but I'm just backdated. Yeah. I've always been confused by this. The north side of my town faced east and the east was facing south. And precisely what I meant to mm. understand from that. Yeah. And also, I've heard it sung instead of my fine-looking suit. It was my Carnaby suit, as in reference to Carnaby Street. Carnaby Street, yeah. In there, so. Fashionable. Very fashionable. Buy, buy stuff. Yeah. That then leads us to the wonderful song "Paper Sun." Um, and I don't know this song at all. Never heard it. So, and I'm going to be reading the lyrics. And so at least I can't be influenced by the song in the way that I read the lyrics. <laughs> no, this is, this is wonderful. It was the first song um, issued by Traffic, um, a group that formed around Steve Winwood, who was already very well known, having had three hit singles with the Spencer Davis group. Um, I think he was 15 when he joined the group. And so he, he wasn't 20 by this time. Um, it made the number five in the UK and it got to number 70 in the Billboard chart meaning that traffic had arrived with their first song yeah. um, and I think it's a reflection on the the hippie lifestyle just as it was beginning in 1967 that that was always my thought about it okay maybe not okay let's give it a try yes paper sun so you think you're having good times with the boy that you just met kicking sand from beach to beach your clothes all soaking wet. But if you look around and see your shadow on the run, don't be too upset because it's just a paper sun. Oh, paper sun. Oh, paper sun. In the room where you've been sleeping, all your clothes are thrown about. Cigarettes burn window sills. Your meters all run out. But there again, it's nothing. You just split when day is done. Hitching lifts to nowhere. Hung up on the paper sun. Oh, paper sun. Oh, paper sun. Standing in the cool of my room, fresh cut flowers give me sweet perfume. Too much sun will burn. When you're feeling tired and lonely, you see people going home. You can't make the train fare or the sixpence for the phone. And icicles you're crying down your cheek have just begun. Don't be sad. Good times are had beneath the paper sun. Oh, paper sun, oh, paper sun. Daylight breaks while you sleep on the sand. 
A seagull is stealing the ring from your hand. The boy who had given you so much fun has left you so cold in the paper sun. Lyrics by Jim Capaldi, who is also the drummer of the traffic and wrote most of their lyrics. Uh, apart from the Dave Mason songs where Dave Mason wrote lyrics. Um, OK, uh, moving on to another of the great uh, lyricists, mm. um, Ray Davis um, of the Kinks. And this is, it's a classic song, mm. um, released in April 1967. It made number two in, in the UK and again, didn't make the Billboard chart, which is yeah. funny because you kind of think of you know, the Stones, the Beatles, the Kinks, the Who, mm. it's about in that order, mm. making it in, in the US. Um, there's a reference to Terry and Julie in it, which mm. I believed. So the song is? The song is Waterloo Sunset. <laughs> yeah, we might as well let you in on that secret. Um, and it has a line about Terry and Julie, which I presumed, along with many other people, was a reference to the actors Terence Stamp and Julie Christie, who were having a, rela in a relationship. They just made the movie uh, Far From the Madding Crowd. Mm, yeah. And... Uh, Ray Davis says this isn't true and it was actually about his sister and um, one of his later biographers says it's actually about his cousin. So uh, who knows, it's a, a reference we lose, but here it is, Waterloo Sunset. Dirty old river, must you keep rolling, flowing into the night? People so busy, makes me feel dizzy, taxi light shines so bright. But I don't need no friends. As long as I gaze on Waterloo sunset, I'm in paradise. Every day I look at the world from my window, but chilly chilly is the evening time, Waterloo sunset's fine. Terry meets Julie, Waterloo station, every Friday night, but I am so lazy, don't want to wander, I stay at home at night. But I don't feel afraid, as long as I gaze on Waterloo sunset, I'm in paradise. Every day I look at the world from my window, but chilly, chilly is the evening time. Waterloo sunset's fine. Millions of people swarming like flies round Waterloo underground, but Terry and Julie cross over the river where they feel safe and sound, and they don't need no friends as long as they gaze on Waterloo sunset. They are in paradise. Waterloo sunset's fine. Mm. Not needing any friends, what a strange situation mm. to be in. I can't imagine that. And I can't mm. imagine going, oh, well, I've got this sunset, so I don't need to have friends. But that's mm. Ray Davis for you, you know. Mm. And later, of course, he would um, <clears throat> have partnership with Chrissy Hind. Mm. And you can see references to him. There's a, a line, you write the beautiful songs, in one of mm. her songs, which is about mm. him. Oh. And uh, they had a child together. So there you go. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Didn't oh, know yeah. So mm. Gossip gathered from Hello magazine. Oh, my <laughs> Which I read assiduously. <laughs> keep it very well hidden from me. I keep it very well <laughs> hidden from me. Um, yeah, the thing about not wanting, not needing friends mm. and looking at a sunset, when you were reading that, and I know the song very well, mm. but I was thinking, actually, I... Although overall, I wouldn't want a life without friends. There are really um, very memorable moments in my life that have just been me and something mm. in nature. Mm. And if anybody else had been there, that would not have been the point. Mm. Does that make sense? So I, I, that line I can really relate to in those moments. Yeah. I, I think there are transcendent moments with nature and with art um, and I agree with you that, that that's something that you experience on your own mm. but mm. I'm not sure that you were there <laughs> what can I say um, we move on to uh, Prokul Haram very strange mm. name mm. Um, do we know, know where the name comes from? not really no, no. The, okay. the word Haram is, is an invented word mm. Um, Procol, I think, is, is a Latin word, but um, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the song White Shade of Pale, which was released in April 1967 and held the number one position in the UK charts for six weeks, 
and reached number five in the Billboard chart. It's said to have been John Lennon's favourite song at the time, mm. and in his Rolls Royce, imagine no possessions, <laughs> he had a, a record player which is gyroscopically stabilised. Ah. Do you think you can? Um, and he would put the single of, mm. of this on and play it while driving around, ah, while right. his chauffeur drove him around London. Um, champagne socialism, nothing. Um, it is set to Bach's second movement uh, of the orchestral suite number three in D major, which is listed as BM, sorry, BWV uh, 1068, but is more commonly known as the air on a G string, which mm. always excites a certain amount of <laughs> ribaldry. Um, yeah. So there we are. Mm. And I think we... musically, it's really, really it's so famous mm. musically, and the odd line. People sort of often remember the odd line or recognise, especially the, light fandango, especially the opening yeah. line. But then the and the sixteen Vestal Virgins, mm. for example. Um, but yeah, as the whole, having looked at the whole lyric, it's a lot more. Um, yeah, it's more more interesting mm. than I thought. Yeah. And there's lots that I'd never picked up for all the thousands of times I've heard the song. Mm. A whiter shade of pale. We skipped the light fandango, turned cartwheels across the floor. I was feeling kind of seasick, but the crowd called out for more. The room was humming harder as the ceiling flew away. When we called out for another drink, the waiter brought a tray. And so it was that later, as the miller told his tale, that her face, at first just ghostly, turned a whiter shade of pale. She said... There is no reason, and the truth is plain to see. But I wandered through my playing cards and would not let her be one of sixteen vestal virgins who were leaving for the coast. And although my eyes were open, they might have just as well been closed. She said, I'm home on shore leave, though in truth we were at sea. So I took her by the looking glass and forced her to agree, saying, You must be the mermaid who took Neptune for a ride. But she smiled at me so sadly that my anger straightway died. If music be the food of love, then laughter is its queen. And likewise, if behind is in front, then dirt in truth is clean. My mouth, by then like cardboard, seemed to slip straight through my head. So he crash-dived straightway quickly and attacked the ocean bed. And it... It's it's got that kind of mi I think this is what the sixties are like this kind of mixture of profundity and absurdity mm. that that you know some of the lines are really wondering, but because it was delivered with such conviction, Broke Harlem mm. were really mm. a good band and and the the vocal on it the baritone vocal is is just mm. beautiful so and you've got Bach going on in mm. the background which has got to be a good thing. Um, finally. We come to Mr. John Lennon, um, and Lennon and McCartney began the, Brit the British invasion. So it, mm. it's uh, we've we've sort of wandered through. But she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't really seem to fit in with our poetic. Um, no, there's not much to be gained, no. I think, from reading those lyrics out. Mm. Unless you've got Peter Sellers, of course. She loves you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's another story, and you'll probably find it on YouTube. Um, John Lennon's Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Lucy, L, Sky, S, Diamonds, D. Yeah. So it was often said it's a, it's a hallucinogenic song. I think perhaps the finest of hallucinogenic yeah. songs. It really is quite remarkable mm, yeah. the imagery he achieves. But he said it's got nothing to do with mm. all of the acid he was cramming into his head at the time. Mm. It was his four-year-old son Julian's drawing, which was called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And uh, mm. hard to argue with that, because sadly Mr. Lennon is no longer with us to, mm. to argue. The amount of detail, I would suggest, that you, most four-year-olds would not have. Julian was, the... was very precocious. <laughs> Salt water tears. Yeah, he had his own hit, you know, later on. Um, it is said that actually Paul McCartney spent a lot more time with Julian Lennon than John Lennon did. And, mm -hmm. You know, 
That's another story. Yeah, that it? is another story. Also, there is an interesting little factoid that um, in 1974, 40% um, of a complete fossil skeleton um, of an Australopithecus afarensis specimen, <laughs> which I'm sure we're all familiar with, was discovered, I think probably by one of the leakies, because they usually discovered these things. And it is one of the most important... Who are the, sorry, who are the leakies? Well, the leakies were a family who were investigating the Kenyan Rift and dug out many of the hominid fossils. Okay. Um, if if uh, the... Um, yeah, it's probably not that imp that important. I just yeah. when you because you use the word, I just wondered. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Jane Goodall, Diane Fossey, the the women who went out to study orangutans. I remember, can't remember mm. their name. Chimps. They were dispatched by Leakey. So okay. You know, they went in and said, "How can we help in your work?" And he said, "To understand human evolution, we need to look at the other primate species." Okay. So they discovered this thing and they called it Lucy. So it's, and they keep going I've that. seen pictures of it, yes. Because of the Beatles song, she's about four foot tall, mm. and um, she is reckoned so to be. What's the link? 3.2 million years old. They called her Lucy because um, of the song Lucy in the Sky. And they were listening to this song, and they heard it as uh, Lucy in Disguise, and somehow applied this to, and said, oh, we'll call this. What an obscure. So they, they were. They, right, okay. And they didn't. Very they didn't realize what they'd found. They just so they no. They, and but then I'm just when it was trying dated, to work out the, the link yeah. between what? between the song and the thing. I think you have to study anthropologists in depth to understand. Oh, it's being just, played loudly and repeatedly in yeah, the camp while they, they were they were playing it. Yeah, yeah. Because when you said they heard it, if you just hear a song once, it doesn't mm. mean that you, yeah over and over okay. again until eventually okay. they couldn't stand it. <laughs> And um, yeah, I get you now. You know, if they'd been listening to Waterloo Sunset, it would Might have been, been called Waterloo or, t or Julie, Julie or Terry. Mm. <laughs> it's like, who knows? Um, so here we are. We come to it eventually after a great deal of waffle on my <laughs> part, which I know is what everybody tunes in for. Um, <laughs> probably not. Uh, this is the, the wonderful lyric to by John Lennon mm. to Lucy in the Sky, uh, John Winston Lennon. Uh, to Lucy in the Sky of the Diamonds. Picture yourself in a boat on a river with tangerine trees and marmalade skies. Somebody calls you, you answer quite slowly. A girl with kaleidoscope eyes. Cellophane flowers of yellow and green towering over your head. Look for the girl with the sun in her eyes and she's gone. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Ah. Oh. Follow her down to a bridge by a fountain where rocking horse people eat marshmallow pies. Everyone smiles as you drift past the flowers that grow so incredibly high. Newspaper taxis appear on the shore, waiting to take you away. Climb in the back with your head in the clouds. And you're gone. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Picture yourself on a train in a station with plasticine porters with looking glass ties. Suddenly, someone is there at the turnstile. A girl with kaleidoscope eyes. And for our American viewers, uh, plasticine is called mm. modelling clay. Uh, yeah. It's a mixture of clay and linseed oil, in fact, mm. if you want to get technical, which you probably don't. Um, that leads us on to a song by um, Kenny Lane and Steve Marriott of The Small Faces, one of the other tremendously successful um, British invasion bands. Um, and a genuine delight, wonderful oh. band. I love The, the Small Faces. Um, particularly the the first rock opera which they recorded it was released almost a year to the day before Tommy by the Who mm. which was not the first rock opera the first mm. rock opera is on Ogden's Not Gone Flake and it is <laughs> taking the mickey out of the idea of enlightenment which will be the basis for all you know the point the lamb lies down on Broadway tale all of these rock operas including Tommy are about enlightenment except for Ogden's, which pre predates them, says, nah, that's a silly thing. You don't want to believe in that. Life is just a bowl of all bran. Um, but this is not that song. This is the song Ichiku Park, which was banned.
speaker by the BBC because it said to refer to taking drugs as if, as if any kids at that time were taking drugs. Ridiculous idea. Um, it was released in August 1967, uh, the end of the summer of love. Mm -hmm. It reached number three in the UK chart, number 16 um, in the Billboard chart in, in the US. Um, it was um, mainly the, the production of Ronnie Lane, um, who was the bass player and second vocalist, and lovely guy, brilliant guy. And he'd been reading a leaflet on the virtues of Oxford, which talked about its dreaming spires. And so he thought he could shove that in a song. I like the sound of that. Yeah. And Ichiku Park is, is a real mystery. It could be Little Ilford Park on Church Road in the London suburb of Manor Park, which is where Steve Marrick grew up. Or it could be Wanstead Flats, which is also the end of Manor Park. Ronnie Lane said, it's a place we used to go to in Ilford, which is... Not yeah. there. Years ago, some bloke we know suggested it to us because it's full of nettles and you keep scratching. Itchy coo. Um, mm. So there we are, if you would um, regale us with Itchy Park. Oh, I would, yes. Um, and as well as Dreaming Spires, there's um, in the first line reference to Bridge of Sighs, <clears throat> which famously is in Venice, but um, also there's a little Bridge of Sighs in Cambridge. Mm. So I always understood that there's reference in the first line, first verse to both Oxford and Cambridge. And it's all coming from this cool blimey lad who didn't go to either yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. Bless him. Over bridge of sighs to rest my eyes in shades of green. Under dreaming spires to Ichiku Park, that's where I've been. What did you do there? I got high. What did you feel there? Well, I cried. But why the tears there? I'll tell you why. It's all too beautiful. It's all too beautiful. I feel inclined to blow my mind, get hung up, feed the ducks with a bun. They all come out to groove about, be nice and have fun in the sun. I'll tell you what I'll do. What will you do? I'd like to go there now with you. You can miss out school, won't that be cool? Why go to learn the words of fools? What will we do there? We'll get high. What will we touch there? We'll touch the sky. Why the tears there? I'll tell you why. It's all too beautiful. It's all too beautiful. It's all too beautiful. I feel inclined to blow my mind, get hung up, feed the ducks with a bun. They all come out to groove about, be nice and have fun in the sun. It's all too beautiful. It's all too beautiful. Mm. And it, it's that mix which you find in Ray Davis, you find with the Beatles, with the Rolling Stones, um, which somehow, for me, it, there are echoes of Gilbert and Sullivan, these comedy sort of mm, yeah. you know, precise and at times extraordinarily um, observant songs. Mm. Um, the, the end of Music Hall, which it was just happening, so, so there's, a, there, there's a real, you know, Cockney, gall blimey thing mm. going, feed, feed the ducks with a bun. Yeah. Um, and the psychedelic drugs that were going yeah. on, but mixed in with a, a, a social perception, you know, often mm. Lennon McCartney, Mick Jagger, Ray Davis, you know, dedicated follower of fashion, what have you. They're saying something about the society mm. we live in, you know, 19th nervous breakdown. Mm. And, and it, you know, so, so with that, that there is some kind of inference about this difference between those kids who are going to Oxford and Cambridge and mm. us feeding the ducks with a bun, you know, mm. and mm. we can miss out school, won't that be cool? Mm. Go to learn the words of fools. Um, yeah. Um, we now come to, oh, I think, one of the great songs of the 60s. Uh, another of the great songs, actually all of these are great songs. Mm. This was released in November 1967. Uh, it made number two as a part of the extended play record Magical Mystery Tour. Mm. And the song it was written by Paul McCartney, so is therefore, of course, credited to Lennon and McCartney as all of their songs are. He tried to get, get it so they'd say McCartney and Lennon for the ones he wrote and Lennon and McCartney mm. for the ones that Lennon mostly wrote, but 
there's still some resistance to that. And I think that's wrong. I think they should be credited, mm. you know, to the amount of work they did. Um, McCartney said that, that this came f from a Dutch design collective called The Fool, who did do a tremendous amount of work for the Beatles. Um, they painted uh, psychedelic colours over George Harrison's Mini Cooper and they designed clothes mm. for them, they painted yeah. guitars for them, they, there was a mural at Apple Studios. I, yeah, and they call themselves a fool after the, the card in the tarot called the fool. Mm. I can't really fit that at all with the lyric, I must say. Uh, it mm. seems to me that he's actually saying something profound about, about those kind of isolated geniuses. Mm. Um, who you know people like Vincent van Gogh who are outside of society mm. and see something that is not being seen mm. by the world around them and are to some extent despised by the world around them mm. um, so you know I mean if we could also perhaps look at somebody like uh, Baruch Spinoza who was condemned by the society around him and uh, yet contributed so much to philosophy mm. Uh, but he maybe wasn't thinking about that, who knows. Uh, the Fool on the Hill. Day after day, alone on a hill, the man with the foolish grin is keeping perfectly still, but nobody wants to know him. They can see that he's just a fool, and he never gives an answer. But the Fool on the Hill sees the sun going down, and the eyes in his head see the world spinning round. Well on the way, head in a cloud, the man of a thousand voices talking perfectly loud, but nobody ever hears him or the sound he appears to make. And he never seems to notice, but the fool on the hill sees the sun going down and the eyes in his head see the world spinning round. And nobody seems to like him, they can tell what he wants to do and he never shows his feelings. But the fool on the hill sees the sun going down and the eyes in his head see the world spinning round. He never listens to them. He knows that they're the fools. They don't like him. The fool on the hill sees the sun going down and the eyes in his head see the world spinning round. Mm. It's part of a project, a magical mystery tour, which was actually a kind of home movie made by Paul McCartney. And I must say that I've never liked it. Um, the film, no, yeah, I've not. The, I don't know. And yet the music for it. Mm, I remember my brother yeah. Jamie bringing the EP home and I was devastated when his girlfriend left it on the, the back of the car so the son got it yeah. and the second <laughs> record wouldn't play. You know? mm. it, and I still listen to it. I still come back to it you know, every year and, and listen to these wonderful songs that they put together. Mm. Um, and I've always somehow preferred it, the psychedelic period, to Sgt Pepper, which I also think is fantastic and exceptional, mm. but um, there's mm. something about the magical mystery tour. As long as you don't have to watch John Lennon shuffling spaghetti, mm. you know, that, that's just a bit too much, I think. A step too far. Yes. Yeah. Um, this brings us to... The uh, sunshine of your love. The sunshine of your love. Um... Something which people, even older people, can experience. <laughs> um, this was released in December 1967. By this time, Cream, the first so-called super group, mm. brought together the legendary Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, Jack Bruce combination. The song was written, the lyric is, is written by Pete Brown, who wrote, co-wrote most of the Cream songs with um, Jack Bruce, White Room, for example, is his. Uh, the Politician was written by Jack Bruce on his own. Um, Bruce wrote the music when he realised why everybody was was going crazy about Jimi Hendrix. He he couldn't get this apparently, which is is a really startling thought. You know, Bruce is a classically trained cellist um, with a who understood jazz and had been writing jazz pieces since his teens. He'd written his first string quartet when he was 11. You know, he's a really precocious mm -hmm. um, chap. But when he saw Hendrix, and they were the first people to see Hendrix play, because two days after Hendrix arrived in England, uh, the last day of September 1966, he went on stage with Cream at their second gig. Mm. And it's said that Eric Clapton came off the stage shaking 
he couldn't stay on stage with him and he couldn't light a cigarette. He was so shaken by what he'd seen in Hendrix. Jack Bruce is going, what's the fuss about? And then he saw him, this is quite late on in 60s, you know, he'd been around for a year and he suddenly got this, mm. what this guy was bringing together out of all the forms of music. Got his double bass and wrote this um, quite remarkable song. And um, Ursula is now going to, to read the lyric. Of I am. Sunshine of your love. It's getting near dawn when lights close their tired eyes. I'll soon be with you, my love, to give you my dawn surprise. I'll be with you, darling, soon. I'll be with you when the stars start falling. I've been waiting so long to be where I'm going in the sunshine of your love. I'm with you, my love, the light's shining through on you. Yes, I'm with you, my love, it's the morning and just we two. I'll stay with you, darling, now. I'll stay with you till my seas are dried up. I've been waiting so long to be where I'm going in the sunshine of your love. I'm with you, my love, the light's shining through on you. Yes, I'm with you, my love, in the morning and just we two. I'll stay with you, darling, now. I'll stay with you till my seas are dried up. I've been waiting so long. I've been waiting so long to be where I'm going in the sunshine of your love. Um, um, and as, you know, I'm very devoted to Jack Bruce and his work mm -hmm. um, and, and have tens of Jack Bruce albums, literally. Um, and well worth it. Incredible, incredible man. Um, but when I listen to him singing that song, he mm. does not sing when my seas are dried up. He sings when my seeds are dried mm -hmm. up and I think for the sake of the BBC because they were uh, banning things that this reference possibly to semen would not have been permitted mm. so we see it always printed as when my seeds are dried up. Would well, you know what I read it not I don't mean I read it as seeds mm. but I thought all oh, right yeah know what that's referring to <laughs> yeah <laughs> until I'm all it. dried out. <laughs> <laughs> And it takes uh, 72 hours on average for them to, to lose their potency for anybody who's checking. So he, he wasn't just going to wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. He was going to hang around for a couple of days. 72 hours till just... they lose their potency? Yeah, well, they dry up. You know, it's, it's one way of saying it. Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, I was thinking of it as kind of <laughs> emptied out. Whereas for how, however long his how, how seas long... might take, you know. The... <laughs> <laughs> how long <clears throat> shall we have the semen conversation for? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it is worth mentioning, perhaps, that the drummer with Cream, Ginger Baker, was in fact, and make sure you swallowed first, was in fact called Phil Seaman. Right. Oh, right. We're now going to move on very swiftly. I can see why he changed his name. Well, um, to, um, to Mr. David Jones, mm. commonly known as Bowie, although some people like to call him Bowie. Um, mm, yes, he those called his daughter that... Wowie Bowie. Zoe. Zoe oh, Bowie. That's Zoe. right. I'm going crazy. Wow. Wowie <laughs> that Bowie. Would be Bowie. <laughs> that would have been even better. Not like Frank Zappa, who called his daughter oh. Moon Unit, but um, the people have strange. Cruel man. Yeah. Uh, Zoe Bowie. Bowie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got there eventually. Um, He'd been trying for a very long time, for five years. He'd been recording songs. He'd recorded Chim Chimini Chim Chimini Chim Chim Chiri. He'd recorded The Laughing Gnome. And he'd uh, still not break, hmm? broken through. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, he tried in 1964 to form a duo called David, himself and Goliath, Steve Marriott, who was only yeah. five foot four. And instead Marriott joined the small faces. Led Zeppelin tried to get Marriott that. too, you know. Um, this song is one of the classics, mm. it, absolutely, and Bowie recorded many classic songs over the years. Um, it was released on the 11th of July 1969. It made number one in the UK and number 15 in the Billboard chart. Bowie himself said that the song expressed his feeling of complete isolation. Mm. Mm. Um, and he talked about his mum and dad not hugging him and kissing him and that, you know, mm. he goes through this arc, I think, where he is, he's narcissistic and he, it's happened to him. He wants somebody to love him. He wants, mm, mm. and I think looking at his later career in the 1980s and onward, that he somehow became, you know, he 
got the love he needed. And as the thin white duke, I don't see him as being narcissistic. He seemed actually in interview to be quite a humble mm. man who who achieved tremendous things, really. Mm. Mm. You know, he's a great artist. So um, the title itself, A Space Oddity, is a pun on Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah. Which had come out the year before. Yeah. But the narrative to this is A Space Oddity. Mm, it certainly is. And this song, one, when I um, first heard it, this was the first song that made me realise that music could be really interesting, could tell interesting stories and be... Because I think musically it's really interesting as mm. well. Whereas for me, as a child, until then, it had been music had been something kind of that you just sing along to, dance, I used to dance along to stuff. But this made me, oh, oh, the world of music and lyrics mm. is fascinating. Mm. Yeah. It's a kind of transition from nursery rhyme to poetry. Mm. That suddenly, oh, this means something. Yeah, yeah. Space oddity. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Commencing countdown. Engines on. Check ignition. And may God's love be with you. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, lift off. This is ground control to Major Tom. You've really made the grade. And the papers want to know whose shirts you wear. Now it's time to leave the capsule if you dare. This is Major Tom to ground control. I'm stepping through the door. And I'm floating in a most peculiar way. And the stars look very different today. For here... Am I sitting in a tin can, far above the world? Planet Earth is blue and there's nothing I can do. Though I'm past 100,000 miles, I'm feeling very still. And I think my spaceship knows which way to go. Tell my wife I love her very much. She knows. Ground control to Major Tom, your circuit's dead. There's something wrong. Can you hear me, Major Tom? 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 Here am I floating round my tin can, far above the moon. Planet Earth is blue and there's nothing I can do. Complete isolation indeed. Mm. And it, it has that double meaning. The planet mm. Earth is blue. Yeah. Both the colour and the mood. And mm. the mood, there's nothing I can do. Mm. Yeah. And and of of course there's the um we don't know whether it was a deliberate thing, was was it him choosing to cut off or was it an accident and he's just there's nothing I can do. And of course it also has to be said that it's the same month as the moon landing that the song is. Yes. Uh, released um, so the uh, blue planet image was mm. uh, and still is a very significant image of mm. Uh, mm. The, the movement of human civilization. if of course the moon landings actually happened that is definitely another story it is. They, they actually because of all of the comments about the studio and all of this that mm. and the other um, there is actually a complete reconstruction showing that yes, these are the shadows you would mm -hmm. get, mm -hmm. and the amount of work went into proving this. It's like, okay, he then, having spent five years getting a hit single, mm -hmm. doing everything you could possibly think of, it wasn't to be another three years before he'd have another. And he said that he just decided to put together all of the cliches and wrote Starman. Mm. And uh, it was like, well, that's I'm successful writing things about space. I'll write this this song, mm. and um, it, it 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 wasn't. So we have two songs: one which is uh, this first one, Space Oddity, which is utterly sincere, mm. from a man who spent five years being insincere and desperately trying. You know, I'm the laughing gnome, and you can't catch me. Mm. Not one of my favourite songs. 
and now we have this great song and then he wanders in the wilderness for mm. three years and puts the cliches together and has another great hit and and also starman is although it comes later than than that one mm. that is a return to the kind of songs where I would just kind of sing along, dance along to. Yes. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just, cheer. so yeah, that's quite, quite like interesting. He to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds. Mm. And he might do, frankly. Um, so we come now to the, the end of mm. the 60s. And if you can remember it, you weren't there. Um, this is a song released in October 1969. It was part of an album that would probably cause more change in popular music than almost any record. Mm. Um, the record was The Court of the Crimson King. Um, the people releasing it, the band at the beginning of the year was called Giles, Giles and Fripp, and it was a comedy band. Mm. And okay. it was weird that they transformed into this band very much, I think, through listening to early 20th century music. So they did actually do a version of um, Mars from the Planets by Holst. Mm. And it was meant to go on the album, but Holst's widow wouldn't permit it. Okay. And so they put it into another song, and it's on the second album in the wake of Poseidon. Okay, and so what did the band become known as? They're, this is King Crimson. <laughs> and um, the Crimson King is the devil. It is. Okay. Uh, uh, though they're, none of that, it's not like Black Sabbath, they're not going to then do anything that seems to be about but the court of the crimson king is hell and, okay um, their lyricist was, at this time was a man called peter sinfield who also did the light show and uh, i think he is a poetic genius uh, looking at the work that he did over the years after that mm. he has a, a real ear and a real sensibility the song that, that i'm going to read out is 21st century schizoid man and this is a prophecy this is saying that by the 21st century, people won't care anymore. Technology will have taken over. I've got a rather... The album made number five in the UK and number 28 on Billboard. And you have a rather long description of what schizoid means. It's a psychiatric diagnosis, a personality disorder characterised by a lack of interest in social relationships, a tendency towards a solitary or sheltered mm. lifestyle with your iPhone, um, secretiveness, emotional coldness, detachment and apathy. Affected individuals may be unable to form intimate attachments to others and simultaneously possess a rich and elaborate but exclusively internal fantasy world. Um, can also have stilted speech, a lack of deriving enjoyment from most activities, feeling as though one is an observer rather than a participant in life, an inability to tolerate emotional expectations of others, and mm. apparent indifference when praised or criticised, a degree of asexuality, and idiosyncratic moral or political beliefs. I read all of that because I think it was a very interesting prophecy so, coming yeah. from 1969, and yes. we have, to some extent, fulfilled it, unfortunately. When the album came out, um, the critic Robert Kreisgau called it Airsat's shit. <laughs> John Morthland of Rolling Stone said King Crimson had combined aspects of many musical forms to create a surreal work of force and originality. In 2009, uh, critic Alexander Milas described In the Court of the Crimson King as the album which blew off the doors of musical convention and cemented these quintessentially British innovators' place in rock history for all time. Pete Towns under The Who called the album an uncanny masterpiece. And Jimi Hendrix said that King Crimson were his favourite band. Mm. So, accolades. Accolades indeed. And here it is. 21st century schizoid man. Cat's foot, iron claw. Neurosurgeons scream for more. A paranoia's poison door. 21st century schizoid man. Blood rack, barbed wire. Politician's funeral pyre. Innocents raped with napalm fire. 21st century schizoid man. Death seed, blind man's greed, poets starving, children bleed. Nothing he's got he really needs. 21st century schizoid man. 
like you say, I think that's and that's a good description. I think of the um of something fairly grim. Yeah. The dissociation and, and, of, of, yeah. of our times where where you know it takes a, a child like Greta Thunberg to come forward and say, What are you doing? you know How that, dare you? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing um, he's got he really needs. Yeah. And it yes, it does feel as though it was a, a very good prophecy. Hmm. I mean, I remember hearing that uh, on average, people who buy a garment from Topshop wear mm. it once. Mm. You're going, haven't you understood? <laughs> mm. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Got it. It's a 1960s slogan. Mm. Um, but but there we are. So those are some song lyrics which uh, we have read out, and treated as poetry because they deserve to be treated as poetry. Mm. Mm. Um, and we would like to go from there, you know, just into this Coleridge thing, the, mm. the, using the best words. The, the best words in the best order. In the best order. And that, that to understand that poetry is exactly that. It's something that's said um, accurately. Mm. Mm. Something that describes something and that gives insight. And that can happen in song lyrics as well as in um, poetry that is, is simply written to be read. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And we will come back to other groups of songs another time, I'm sure. But we thanks. Shall. Thank you for the British invasion, John. That's my, <laughs> my, my pleasure. Any time you want a British invasion, I will give you one. Um, I'm John Atak. I'm Ursula Wake. Thank you for your time. Thank you.